In this set of reactions, we're asked to predict the major products of the following E2 reactions, showing the correct EZ stereochemistry. The correct answer to the first problem is right here. The correct answer to the second problem, and I haven't left myself room over here to the right, so I'm going to show it here to the left, is this molecule right here. Now, if you're cool with that, we'll just leave it as is. If you want to know why each of these is the individual answer that it is, I'll show you on the board right now. Now, if you look at these uh, two examples here, both of them are going to undergo E2 reactions, which is already stated in the question anyway. What is going to be the favored product? The only difference between these starting materials is the stereo configuration at this carbon atom. You'll notice that I've got a methyl that ha has a dashed bond, which means that three-dimensional is pointing away from us. Although we don't draw hydrogens all the time in the world of organic chemistry, that means that there is a hydrogen coming out towards us that is implied. It is there. Whereas over here, this carbon stereocenter right here has a methyl coming three-dimensionally towards us, which means that three-dimensionally speaking, there's a hydrogen pointing away from us. Now, of course, the most favored product that's going to come out of these reactions is going to be the one that forms a double bond here, because that will be an internal double bond uh, according to Zaitsev's rule. And that will necessitate that the base, in this case the terp butoxide, comes and grabs that hydrogen and dumps the electrons down into there and kicks off the iodine. So when this occurs, is it going to give me this product, the one in which the ethyl group and the methyl group down here are pointing in opposite directions? This would be the uh, E alkene. Or is it going to give me the one in which the methyl group and the ethyl group are pointing in the same direction, the Z alkene? Which one is it? Well, the answer is going to depend completely upon this hydrogen and this leaving group. Or, with this example down here, this hydrogen and this leaving group. One thing that I've taught you before, or in uh, a lecture that I will link to here, is the fact that these groups, the leaving group and the hydrogen that's going to be eliminated, have to be in the same plane as each other and anti to each other. We call that anti-coplanar. And the final stereochemistry of the product ends up being determined completely by uh, how, how you rotate around this bond in order to achieve getting this hydrogen and this iodine anti-coplanar to each other. I'll go ahead and show you that more clearly in a handmade model. Okay, so here's a cute little molecule or model that's uh, supposed to represent the molecule we were just staring at on the board. Uh, I've omitted all the unnecessary hydrogens in order to make it a little bit less confusing. As you can see, this is an ethyl group up here. This is the ethyl group right here. This is the methyl that was pointing down here. And of course, there are hydrogens around this methyl, but I've left them off so that uh, it's less cumbersome. The blue ball here represents the iodine. And as you can see, on the board, it was pointing three-dimensionally towards us, as was indicated by a little wedged bond to the iodine. Uh, over here, you've got a methyl group that's pointing three-dimensionally towards us, as was indicated on the board by a wedged bond. And now you can sort of see it a little bit more clearly on this model. There's, of course, a hydrogen over here that's pointing three-dimensionally away from us. You could see that on the board indicated by the dashed bond. And on this carbon over here that's a bond to the iodine, there's another hydrogen that is pointing three-dimensionally away from us. In an E2 reaction, the base is going to come in and grab the hydrogen that's going to be eliminated, in this case, this hydrogen. It's going to grab it, bond with it, and take these electrons and pump, pump them down here to form a double bond and kick off this iodine in one fell swoop. Wa-bam! Now, in order to be able to do this, the hydrogen that's going to be eliminated, this little white ball down here, and this iodine leaving group have to be anti-coplanar. What in the world does that mean? What it means is if we look down the barrel of this thing, uh, there we go, the iodine and the hydrogen have to be in the same plane as each other. See, they're, they're kind of in a nice, neat plane, but they have to be pointing in, an, uh, in opposite directions. So we say that they are anti-coplanar to each other. If, for example, uh, the hydrogen were pointing up here so that it was uh, not anti, it was sin coplanar. They're pointing in the same side, uh, same direction each other. You cannot do an elimination, not an E2 elimination anyway. You can't do an E2 elimination if it's like that or like that or anything else. It has to be anti coplanar. So I've got this hydrogen down here and this iodine up there. Now that I've rotated my bond in the proper direction so that these uh, two groups, this hydrogen to be eliminated and this iodine, are anti coplanar, I can do the elimination. So the base comes in here and grabs this hydrogen and pulls it off takes its electrons that I've just removed and pushes them down here to close like a trapdoor forming a double bond and kicks off this iodine in one fell swoop. Wha-bam! Now, if you can imagine that there's now a double bond here, 
this is what the resulting uh, alkene product is going to look like. As you can see, the ethyl group and this methyl down here, and this is the double bond, are on opposite sides of each other. So this is an E-alkene. As you can see then, in this first example, when I rotate this around to place the hydrogen and the iodine anti-coplanar, it ends up placing this ethyl group and this methyl group trans to each other, I should say, on, on opposite sides of each other relative to this bond, which means that when the elimination occurs, this ethyl group and this methyl group end up being on opposite sides, so this is an E-alkene. We'll now take a look at the second example, and as with the previous example, we're going to attempt to see this a little bit more clearly by showing you an actual physical model. Okay, so here's my cute little model of that molecule. As you can see, it's a little bit different from the previous model. Here's this ethyl group that's up top. Here's this methyl that's pointing down. The iodine is, of course, still pointing towards us because it was drawn on the end of a wedged bond on the board. And this uh, hydrogen is pointing away from us. It was drawn with a dashed bond on the board. The major difference is the configuration at this stereocenter. On the board, the uh, hydrogen was on the end of a wedged bond in this example, and the methyl was in, on the end of a dashed bond, which means the hydrogen is pointing three-dimensionally towards us, while the methyl is pointing three-dimensionally away from us. Uh, it was the opposite with the previous example. As I stated before, in order to do an E2 elimination, this hydrogen, which is going to be eliminated, and this iodine, which is the leaving group, have to be anti-coplanar, which means if we stare down the barrel of this thing, I have to rotate this so that the uh, leaving group and the hydrogen are in the same plane as each other, but pointing in opposite directions. Now that I've done that rotation, I can imagine my base coming in and grabbing this hydrogen taking its electrons and dumping them in here to form a double bond and kicking off this iodine in one fell swoop. Now in contrast with the previous example, as you can see when that occurs, we've got my double bond right here, this ethyl group ends up being cis to this methyl group. So they're on the same side as each other relative to that double bond. So this ends up being a Z alkene. In contrast to the previous example, with this example, in order to place this hydrogen and this iodine anti-coplanar by rotating around this bond, I end up doing so in such a way that this ethyl group and this methyl group end up being cis to each other when this elimination occurs. Thus, I end up getting, having them be on the same side as each other, giving me a Z-alkane.